Clark Gable had roles in over 60 films during his 37-year career, playing the leading man in most of them. He was often referred to as the King of Hollywood. In this video, we're going to look at his tragic death as well as the deaths of two of his wives. Be sure to watch until the end to learn how Gable's image lives on in popular culture. Clark Gable was born February 1, 1901 in Cadiz, Ohio. His father, William Gable, was an oil field worker and his mother, Adeline Hershelman, a farm girl. Tragically, his mother died when he was only a year old. His father remarried when Gable was four, marrying Jenny Dunlap. The family then moved around Ohio until his father took up farming. Young Clark got his first job in a Dayton rubber factory when he was 15. It was while he was working there he saw his first play. He was immediately stage struck and gave up his night schooling to become a doctor so he could get a job as a callboy in the theater, where he earned no salary. He slept in the wings and lived off of whatever money the actors tipped him. He was doing walk-on parts when he was called home because his stepmother was dying. After her death, Gable joined his father in the Oklahoma oil fields for work. After two years, he left to take a job with the Stock Company Theater. He bounced around between jobs for a while until traveling to Hollywood to start a film career in 1924. From 1924 to 26, he appeared as an extra in several silent films. From there, he progressed to supporting roles for MGM Studios, and he landed his first leading role in Dance Fool's Dance in 1931. That was alongside Joan Crawford, who had requested him for the part. His next role in the romantic drama Red Dust in 1932 was alongside the reigning sex symbol of the time, Gene Harlow. That movie cemented him as MGM's biggest male star. Gable went on to win the Academy Award for Best Actor in 1934 for It Happened One Night. He was nominated for the award twice more for his role as Fletcher Christian in Mutiny on the Bounty and as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind. He found continued success throughout the 30s, until he joined the armed forces as an aerial cameraman and bomber gunner in World War II. He enlisted as a private in the Army a few months after the U.S. entered World War II, at the age of 41. He later entered the Army Officers Candidate School at Miami Beach, where he emerged as second lieutenant in 1942 and won his wings as an aerial gunner. He ended up going overseas and was awarded the Air Force Air Medal for exceptionally meritorious achievement in five combat missions. Under the watchful eye of his first wife, Josephine Dillon, who ran an acting clinic in Hollywood, Gable acquired the acting chops that helped shoot him to stardom. He divorced Miss Dillon in 1930, later marrying Rita Langham in 1931. Their marriage only lasted a few years, ending when they separated in 1935 and finally divorcing in 39. After his second marriage ended, Gable married Carol Lombard. They were married in Kingman, Arizona in 1939. After the ceremony, the couple drove back to LA to get back to work. The pair both had a lusty sense of humor and quickly became legend in Hollywood circles. Lombard was killed in a plane crash shortly after the start of World War II, which we'll get into shortly. Gable was single for several years after Lombard's death, until he married Douglas Fairbanks' widow, Lady Sylvia Ashley, in 1949. His fourth marriage also lasted a few years, until Ashley divorced him in 52. After another couple years of bachelorhood, Gable married his fifth wife, Kay Williams Spreckles, in 1955. She was several years younger, at 37, compared to Gable's 54. The two stayed married until Gable's death in 1960. Clark Gable's film career included many well-known pictures, in addition to the ones we've mentioned. Some of the most famous include Hell Divers, Strange Interlude, Call of the Wild, and Too Hot to Handle. His film catalog doesn't only include Hollywood blockbusters, though. When he returned to the U.S. from overseas in 1943, he helped assemble the film Combat America for the Air Force. It was originally intended to be a recruiting film for aerial gunners, but ended up being a documentary about air combat over occupied Europe, since the need for gunners had already lessened. Gable was promoted to the rank of major in June 1944. He hoped for another combat assignment, but by this time he'd been placed on inactive duty and on June 12, 1944, his discharge papers were signed. Interestingly, those papers were signed by Captain Ronald Reagan, who later became the president. Because Gable's film schedule made it impossible for him to fulfill the duties of a reserve officer, 
He resigned his commission on September 26, 1947, a week after the Air Force became an independent service branch. Apparently, Adolf Hitler favored Gable over all other Hollywood actors. During the war, he offered a large reward to anyone who could capture Gable and bring him to Berlin unharmed. Fortunately, that reward was never collected. After returning to civilian life, Gable became known as a loner. Many of his movie roles were rugged he-man types, but in real life, he was a shy man who got nervous in crowds. His on-screen characters made women swoon long before the days of Elvis and the Beatles. Gable once said he had received over 5,000 marriage proposals in the mail. Gable was hospitalized on November 6, 1960 after being stricken with a heart attack. He appeared to be doing fine, but on November 16th, he put his head back on his pillow and died on the spot. Doctors assumed it was another heart attack that took his life. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Carol Lombard Gable's third wife, Carol Lombard, was Hollywood's first casualty of war. When the U.S. was polarized about entering World War II, Lombard had been an outspoken supporter of President Franklin Roosevelt. She was also the first to volunteer to help the war effort and U.S. Treasury officials put the star to work, selling war bonds to help finance the enormous cost of the war. On January 15th, Lombard kicked off the country's first bond drive at a rally in Indianapolis. Since Lombard was from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the location was personal for Lombard. The Treasury Department's goal was to sell $500,000 worth of war bonds and stamps. Lombard's energetic pitch ended up generating more than $2 million. Lombard, along with several others, boarded a commercial TWA flight on January 16th. The flight stopped in Albuquerque, where four passengers disembarked to make room for 15 Army Air Corps aviators and enlisted men. The flight stopped again in Las Vegas, and shortly after takeoff, it hit the high peak of Nevada's Mount Potosi. The wreckage spread for miles, and it was hard to reach in the middle of winter. The damage made it difficult to identify the bodies of the 22 victims of the crash. Gable had been waiting for his wife at the Burbank airport, and he chartered a plane and headed to the scene as soon as he heard. Lombard was only 33 when she died tragically in the plane crash. Kay Williams Kay Williams, Gable's fifth wife, was pregnant with his first child when he died in November of 1960. Their son was born several months later. Williams raised him alone but was active in Hollywood, working with various charities and fundraising organizations. She also helped with Ronald Reagan's first campaign for governor of California. In May of 1967, Kay suffered a mild heart attack, the first of a number of heart problems that plagued her for years. She continued to promote Gable's legacy through the 70s and even planned on writing a book about his life. While the book ended up being published, it was without Williams's authorization. The book, Gable and Lombard, was also made into a movie. After suffering from heart problems for a number of years, Kay was admitted to a Houston hospital to undergo cardiac tests. While she was there, she succumbed to her recurring heart problems on May 25, 1983. While Clark Gable has been gone for over 60 years, his image continues to live on in popular culture. According to Bugs Bunny's creators, Bugs' nonchalant, carrot-chewing standing position was inspired by one of Gable's scenes in It Happened One Night. Along with Kent Taylor, Clark Gable was the inspiration behind the name of Superman's alter ego, Clark Kent. Now it's time to hear from you. What was your favorite Clark Gable movie? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.